Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at zero coupon bonds, which is a form of original issue discount bonds and treasury strips. These topics are covered on the CPA as well as the CFA exam. Farhatlectures.com can help you prepare for your CPA exam as well help you with your accounting and finance courses. I strongly suggest you check out my website. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,800 plus accounting, auditing, tax, as well as finance and Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures, please like them and share them. Put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they may benefit other people as well. And this is my website where you will find the additional resources. So let's talk about the original issue discount bond. And basically, they're less common than then the coupon bond um, and uh, these bonds are issued intentionally on purpose with low coupon rates or s often it's there's no coupon there's no coupon stated but low coupon rate that caused the bond to sell at a discount from the par value the, the most common type of these bonds is something called the zero coupon bond which is a which what i just told you carries no coupon no coupon it means you don't receive any payments so hold on a second why would i buy a zero coupon bond if i'm not going to receive any payment here's what happened it provides all the return in form of a price appreciation so let's assume you purchased a one thousand dollar zero coupon bond what happened is you buy the bond for just for the sake of simplicity three hundred dollars but the face value of the bond is a thousand so as time goes by let's assume it's a 10 year or 15 year bond you keep accumulating interest until you get the thousand dollar face value so you would wait 15 years you don't get anything but you'll get the one thousand all at once so zero provides only one cash flow to their owners and that's at maturity at maturity you'll get your one thousand dollars so this is so zero coupon bond is a form of OI, the original issue discount bonds, and we'll talk about this for tax purposes. Actually, we're going to discuss tax purposes in this session as well. But in my tax course, you know, I go a little bit in details over this. Strips. What are strips? Basically, a brokerage house that purchases a treasury coupon bond, which is they have coupon, ask the treasury to separate the cash flow into a series of independent securities. Remember, when you buy a treasury, treasury bond what happened is this with the bond comes the coupons let me put them in different colors so remember the coupons are the payments on the bond so each each piece is a coupon each p each act is a coupon so fill out all these x's then you have the face value of the bond the face value so what you do is you ask the treasury to separate those separate the face value into one investments separate each coupon payment into a separate investments where each security claim to one of the payment of the original issue discount bond so it's easier to sell so if you want to you could just buy two payments of this bond that's all what you do so this is what strips are so for example a 10-year coupon bond will be stripped into 20 semi-annual payment because you pay it pays every six months and each coupon payment would be treated as a standalone zero coupon bond so each what you do is you pay for that for that payment, let's assume the payment is $50. Maybe you'll pay $27 for it. Well, it's gonna be higher because it's only for six months. Let's assume you paid $47 and you'll get $50. The maturity of these bonds would thus range from six months to 10 years, depending if you're gonna buy each one of them or all of them, but they could range if you only buy one coupon, it's only a six month coupon. So the final payment too of the face value will be treated as another standalone zero coupon security. The face value also will be deep discounted, obviously more than the coupons because you're gonna get it last. Each of these payments will be treated as an independent security and it sign its own Q sub number, which is the security identifier that allows electronic trading over the Fedwire system. Each security head has a Q sub. That's what it is. So the payments are still considered obligation of the U.S. Treasury. It's still the same Treasury bond, except it's separated into separate components. The Treasury program under which the coupon stripping is performed is called strips. This is what we're talking about. Separate trading of registered interest and principle of securities so you are separating the interest payment and the principal we have many interest payments 
and the principal, which is one payment into separate securities, and you are trading them as zero coupon securities. They're called treasury strips. So what happened to zero coupon bond as time goes by? Well, let's take a look at a 30 year until maturity. And suppose the market rate is 10% per year. Here's what's gonna happen. The price of the bond will be today, we're gonna discount $1,000 at 10% for 30 years. So the value of the bond today is $57.31. And year after year, what's gonna happen? Next year, we're gonna discount the $1,000 divided by 1.10, which is the interest rate, one plus I, one plus the interest rate raised to the 29 because we still have 29 years. Therefore, what happened? The bond went up in value from $57.31 to $63.04, pennies, which is a 10% increase over the previous value this is what happened and guess what's going to happen in year three in year Dad, in year two in year three or in year two it's going to you're going to take the thousand dollar divided by one plus ten raised to the 28 power and you'll find the price so what happened over time the price goes up the price of the bond the price of the bond goes up because you you are close close because you are getting closer to maturity and notice it goes you know, a little bit steeper because the value is, you know, you have more, um, the, the uh, you are adding the 10% to a larger number. Therefore, it's it goes up steeper toward the end. It goes up basically to maturity. It goes back up to maturity. So after 30 years, so it start, this bond will start at $57.31. And if you keep it for 30 years, you will get your $1,000. So here's what happened. What happened to those OIDs, original issue discount bond. And my tax students hate this topic because it's always a tricky question. So here we go. The tax authorities that the built-in price appreciation of those OID coupon bond represent an implicit interest payment to the holder of the security. And guess what? That implicit interest payment is taxable. So the IRS calculate a price appreciation schedule to impute taxable interest income for the built-in appreciation during the tax year, even if the asset is not sold or does not mature. So you're not getting any money, you're not selling it, regardless, you still have to pay taxes. Any additional gains or losses that arise from the changes in the market interest rate are treated as capital gain or losses if the OID is sold. Only if it's, if it's sold during the year, then you'll have capital loss or capital gain. If it's not, you don't have to worry about that, but you would still compute an implicit interest and pay taxes on that implicit interest. So if the interest rate originally is 10%, you remember that 30 year zero coupon bond, we said it start at $57.31. The following year, the IRS would calculate what the bond price would be if it's yielding 10%. And this will be, we computed it at $63.04. Therefore you have interest income, a taxable interest income of $5.73. Yes, this amount is subject to tax. And this is the hardest thing for students to understand. And partially it's my fault because at the beginning of the course, I keep emphasize the point that the IRS only tax you when you have the ability to pay. In other words, you have access to the cash and you can use that cash. Here you don't have access to the cash. You can't use that cash. Well, guess what? There's always an exception in tax law. Okay, and this is one of them. Kind of, there's many, but this is one of them. So notice the imputed interest income is based on a constant yield method that ignore any changes in the market rate. Maybe your bond is worth more than $63 and four pennies. Maybe it's worth $70. We don't care about what the market value is. It's based on that interest rate, interest, imputed interest that you pay the taxes. So if the interest rate actually, let's say it fell to 9.9, .9, then you do the, you do your uh, discount based on 1.009 and it's now it's worth $64.72. Well, that's the market. That's how much it's worth today. It doesn't matter. If the bond is sold, if the bond is sold, then the 64.72 and the 63.01 will be treated as capital gain in tax based on the capital gain tax rate. It could be 0, 15, or 20, depending on your capital gain tax rate, okay? If the bond is not sold, then the difference is unrealized capital gain, and we don't pay any taxes on that unrealized capital gain, but we do pay taxes on, in quote, unrealized interest income, on the imputed interest income. In either case, the investor will have to pay $5.70 taxes taxes on $5.73 of imputed interest at whatever tax rate applies to interest income. Interest income is just FYI, it's ordinary income. 
Let's take a look at another example. Let's assume a 30 year maturity bond that's issued with a coupon rate of 4%. Actually, it's the same example. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's a different example. Coupon rate of 4% and yield to maturity of eight. So the coupon is four, but it's yielding 8%. It means the market rate is 8%. So for simplicity, we're gonna assume a yearly uh, coupon payment. So now, because of the low coupon rate, the bond will be issued at a price way below. Think about it. It's offering the coupon is four and the market is eight. So it's gonna be really, really deep discounted. So the bond, when it's issued, it's issued at $549.69. And you could confirm this yourself if you're interested. We learn about this. If the bond, well, in the prior session, if the bond yields to maturity, it's still 8%, then it's one year price a year later will be $553.66, which is we reduced one year, which went from 30 to 29. So the pre-tax holding is exactly 8%. And let's compute that, which is you're gonna get $40 in coupon payment in cash. Then the difference between the old price and the new price, add the $40 to the difference, which is capital appreciation divided by original price, original cost, and you will earn, you are earning a holding, uh, you're holding a period return is eight percent is eight percent now the increase in the bond price based on the constant yield is treated as interest income so the investor is required to pay taxes on the difference in this on, on the on the difference in this so the difference in this the capital pre, well implicit interest is three dollars and 97 cent and you have to pay obviously of course interest on the 40 dollars in cash that you that you received as well so you'll pay taxes on both so if the bond yield actually changes during the year the difference between the bond price and the constant yield value of 553.66 will be treated as capital gain and it's taxable only if the bond were actually sold so any 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 difference in capital gain if it's not sold, well, yeah, that's good. You have capital gain. It's unrealized. You don't have to worry about it. But the implicit interest is taxable. So suppose the yield to maturity of the 4% coupon bond falls to 7%, okay, at the end of the first year, and the investor sells the bond after the first year. So let's assume that's, that's so it, the, the, the coupon went down to 7 and we actually sold the bond. If the investor, federal plus state, uh, taxes are 38 uh, and the combined tax rate on and the combined tax rate on the capital gain is 20 percent what's the investor after tax return so now we need to compute what's the price of the bond so we're gonna have to compute this and then compute what are we going to get an in interest every year in order to find out uh, uh, what is our tax bill? Basic, simply put, what is our tax bill? So first, let's find the price of the bond. So simply put, what we're going to do, we're going to go to the financial calculator, and this is at the end of the first year. So n equal to 29, we're going to put n equal to 29, the interest rate i equal to 7, we're discounting everything at 7, the future value of this bond is $1,000, and the payment is $40, which is because it's paying it's paying uh, a 4% interest, 4% rate. So let's go to the calculator. First, get the price of the bond, then uh, the price of the bond, then we will compute what needs to be done because the originally, let, let just, it was originally 553.66. Notice 553.66, and uh, not originally, uh, the, the, uh, the price of the bond was 553.66 after a year. And at the beginning of the year, it was 549.69. So let's just come, let's get those numbers down. So originally, just so we know, it's 549.69. This is when kind of at point zero. At the end of the year, it was 553.66. Okay. Now we're going to say, well, now it's 7% and we sold it. So first let's find how much it's gonna sold for because now we're gonna have to find the market price of this bond that's important at 7%. So let's go, let's go to the financial calculator. So what's gonna happen for this bond is the future value, it's gonna be a thousand. That's right, the coupon payment is $40. The number of periods here is 29, that's correct. And what else do we have? We have I, 7%. 
and now we need to compute the present value which is how much it's worth so this is worth based on the based on discounting the bond at seven percent based on discounting the payment of forty dollars 29 period future value of a thousand six thirty one point seven one so i'm going to copy this number down six thirty one point seven one let's go back to the powerpoint slides price based on seven percent is six thirty one sixty seven now so what is the okay so what taxes do we have to pay well first we have to pay taxes on the forty dollars remember we received forty dollars but that taxes is subject to federal and state taxes so what's going to happen we're going to take seventy dollars multiplied by one minus point three eight which is the combined taxes so simply put you have to pay thirty eight percent what's left is really sixty two percent of the forty dollars so of the forty dollars your net after taxes is $24.80. Now also you have to compute the difference in, remember because that the imputed interest, the difference between those two, and I believe it was, how much was it? $3.97. So you're, you're going to have to go back there. The difference is $3.97. And 97 cent again this is the imputed this is also taxable and you're going to multiply it again you're only keeping 62 percent of that you're going to keep two dollars and 46 cent then now you actually sold the bond you actually sold the bond well the bond has a value of 553.66 like kind of a book value and now you sold it for 631 so you have to take 631 this is what you sold it for the proceeds minus 553.66 which is the basis now i'm using tax 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 terminology maybe some of you don't like this but i am an accounting professor after all so 631.67 minus 553.66 you have a capital gain of 78 dollars and 0.01 now of this amount you're only going to keep oh of this amount this is capital gain it means you're going to be taxed at 20 percent if you're going to be taxed on 20 percent it means you're keeping 80 percent of this we multiplied by 0.8 so you're keeping 62 dollars and rounding 41 cent so simply put for the capital gain your capital gain is we said oh, let me go back to the calculator i did not copy the numbers down uh, 631.67 minus 553.66 it's 78 dollars that's what i thought so it's so you're going to have capital gains of 78 dollars and one penny to be more specific and you're going to multiply this by one minus 0.2 so you're keeping 80 percent because you're going to have to pay 20 percent in taxes again the capital gain tax is different than your income therefore you will keep 62 dollars and 42 cent so what is your all overall after tax return you add all this up and it's 89 dollars and 67 cent to find out what's your rate of return on this investment well you earned you earned 89 dollars overall and 67 cent and you invested uh 500 and forty nine dollars and sixty nine cent so you're looking at a rate of return of sixteen point three percent not bad at all not bad at all in the next session we would look at the default risk uh, of a bond once again if you like this recording please like it and share it and don't forget to visit my website farhatlectures.com for additional resources for this course as well as your other accounting and finance courses good luck study hard and stay safe